you did this to me. And by this, I specifically mean I'm dressed like a banana. Hey everybody, it's Molly with Mammoth Club and I'm at Epcot today living out the day that you planned for me. If you join us on our Twitch streams a few weeks ago, over a thousand of our followers joined in to help plan a day for me here at Epcot. Now for, did you just spill that all over your shirt? Yeah. I watched you pour that right down It was a lot. Shirt. It was a lot. They chose which park I'm going to, what I'm wearing. I ordered this shirt off jeffbezos.com. I never wear yellow because I'm blonde, so now I'm like all the same color. I look like a banana. But I am here to live out the day that you planned. So from different treats, different activities, different things to look for, you are in charge. But let's get to it. I'm gonna try and check off everything on the list that you gave me. And you know, we gotta go, because it's time to go save the galaxy, baby. If you're not following us on Twitch, we do weekly live trivia. We do interactive live streams like Ask Us Anything, and if we won't answer, we take a punishment. Or this is our second in our Plan Molly's Day series. So over a thousand of you joined in and helped me plan out the day today. And the way we did this is Max and I made a little Mad Lib, and we had you all fill it out with different adjectives. There's also a little bonus section called the Ma'am section. M-A-M, that's Molly Allen Max, that's where we got our name Mammoth Club, where you had to come up with things that satisfy each of those letters. So between all the Mad Libs and the Ma'am part, I've got several tasks on the list today, and we're headed to our first one right now. The first task we'll be checking off today is riding Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. One of our Mad Libs was to ride this e-ticket attraction. Now, e-ticket, if you're not familiar, is the phrase that was coined by the original Disneyland tickets. When you first went to Disneyland and Walt Disney World, you didn't just pay one price and were able to ride whatever you wanted. You paid an admission price, and then you were given a ticket booklet that had A through E tickets at different values. A through E tickets referred to how exciting the attraction was. So the E tickets were the best of the best. They were the most technologically impressive, the most popular, which is why we use the phrase e-ticket today to describe those same rides. The most technologically impressive, the most popular. So at this park, we gave you the choice between Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind, Test Track, Rose Never After, and Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. And the vast majority of you said, save the galaxy, baby. Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind is the newest attraction in Walt Disney World, opening up earlier this year. It is a thrilling roller coaster that puts you on an adventure with your favorite guardians, and it is a ton of fun. It is an omni coaster, first of its kind, because they spin the cars 360 degrees to look at different sets. It doesn't spin like teacups, though, don't worry, but it is a very nauseating experience for some people. This attraction has a 42 inch height requirement and it does not have a standard queue right now. There is no way to just walk up and get in line for this attraction. The only two ways to access Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind is to join the virtual queue, which opens up at 7 a.m. or 1 p.m., or purchase an individual lightning lane, which I call a fancy ride. To join the virtual queue, you need to be locked and loaded and ready to go at right at 7 a.m. I recommend being up a little bit earlier. Make sure everyone that's in your party is linked up and ready to go. You can actually confirm your party starting at 6 a.m. Then I recommend having a world clock on another phone pulled up at 6.59.59, you'll hit refresh on that virtual queue screen and then click join queue as fast as you can and hopefully you'll end up being put in a boarding group for Cosmic Rewind. Then you can go about your day and when it's your turn to ride, you'll get a push notification through the app and it'll tell you that you have an hour to come back and ride Cosmic Rewind. It does give you an estimated wait throughout the day and they will update it so you can kind of gauge when you will be riding the attraction. If that fails, you could then purchase the fancy ride, or if you wanted to ride it twice, you could purchase the fancy ride and join the virtual queue. You cannot, however, join both the 7 a.m. and the 1 p.m. queue. The virtual queue can be very stressful. However, I do prefer it to waiting in a really, really long line. So I recommend trying it first, and if it doesn't work out, then default to purchasing the fancy ride. I also say that because you miss a lot of the queue when you go through the lightning lane, and there are a lot of cool details to look for in this attraction. I did a whole video on the secrets of the best attractions here at Epcot, and I point out a ton of Easter eggs, not only here in the queue, but on the ride, and at attractions like Remy's Ride to Adventure, Spaceship Earth, 
Soren, etc. So check that out for sure. Part of the joy of this attraction is that you don't know what song you're going to get, similar to Rock and Roller Coaster. You could get Conga, you could get Iran, you could get Everybody Wants to Rule the World, you could get One Way or Another, you could get September, or you could get Disco Inferno. My personal favorite is September. So, but we'll see what I get this time. Plus, I'm really excited because come this holiday season, they are going to mix in some holiday tunes, and I really hope they do some wham. I love that pre-show. It makes me laugh every time between Terry Crews and the Guardians. I chuckle every time. I'm very excited. I love this They act as shortcuts, linking distant points in space. Come on. Someone needs to tell me when I'm on. Brian, they're Stone. What? How? What did we think of that? That thing's gotta be worth a fortune. I am Groot. I am Groot. Watching the Terrans from beyond. Oh, okay. Walk on to your vehicle. We'll be right behind you. Stop in the world. Once we cannot stop this, I'm leaving the world. Oh, I'm going to go. I'm going to go. I got Disco Inferno, if you were wondering, and it was delightful. It's a lot of fun. That attraction is just plain fun. That's the best way I can describe it. Oh, great ride. A pain to, to deal with, either virtual queue or fancy ride, but I promise, very worth it if you're a coaster fan, especially. It's funny, because on Guardians of the Galaxy, Drax made fun of my outfit. Well, he made fun of all humans' outfits. Um, but I can't take the blame for this one because part of the deal today was that I bought a shirt off Amazon that you guys voted on and I also wore the ears you guys voted on. So Drax made fun of me and that's your fault. task on my list was to ride whatever had the lowest wait time at blank. We picked someone random from the chat and they said at 11.11. So at 11.11 I made a wish. Um, okay, right. Frozen 95. Gray Fiesta Tour. Oh, matches my shirt. 15. Probably a contender. Figment was 30. Living with the land, 45. Mission Space, 60. Yikes. 90. Everybody's trying to adventure. 50 at the seas with Nemo and friends. No, thank you. I love that ride, but no. Um, Sword Around the World, 85. 45 at Spaceship Earth. Test Track, 95. 95. Okay, it looks like I need to go ride Grand Fiesta Tour. So, vamonos. Ooh, baby, it is busy here today. I think we're still dealing with people that rescheduled from Hurricane Ian. I also think that it was Indigenous People's Day earlier this week, so maybe people have this for fall break. But nonetheless, we are going to Mexico, which is great because another thing on my list is to eat a character-themed snack in a World Showcase country that I've been to the real-life counterpart. And I've been to a decent amount of World Showcase countries in real life. I've been to Mexico. I've been to Germany. I've been to the United Kingdom. I've been to France. I've been to the American Adventure, also known as the United States, where I'm literally right now. But unfortunately, I can't go in there. One of the tasks that is that all day I have to avoid the American Adventure, which fine, but it'd be a real pain as far as getting around World Showcase, which is why they did it. So please note, any footage you see of the American Adventure in this video is B-roll from a different one, because I play by the rules. I also have to applaud the stream for their creativity on this one. It made Max and I both laugh quite a bit, because in a park like Epcot, which is so big, it's 1.2 miles around World Showcase from Mexico to Canada, backtracking is not ideal and I like being efficient in this park especially so the fact that I am gonna have to like get potentially to Germany and then have to turn all the way back around 
is very annoying, but very funny. So I gotta hand it to you. If you wanna know how truly busy it is, there's a line to get in the pyramid. That's where we're at right now. I haven't seen this for quite some time. But here in the Mexico Pavilion, there's the pyramid here. That's where Grand Fiesta Tour, the boat ride that we're gonna go on is. There's a little marketplace. There's La Cava del Tequila, which is a tequila bar. And there is the San Angel Inn Restaurante, which is a full service restaurant. Before jumping in line, I'm gonna peruse the marketplace. I think the best chance of me finding a character snack that's not like, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is this a joke? Are they so serious right now? Um, I actually did have some youths over at Universal the other day ask me how uh, if I could take their picture with a disposable camera and then they proceeded to tell me how to use the flash. Um, it was jarring, but are those coming back? What is happening? Where do you get it developed? Anyway, I'm looking in the merchandise locations for a snack because unless I'm going to get something generic like a Mickey bar, which I'd prefer not to do, most of the restaurants are going to have specific character-based snacks in the countries because most of the restaurants are operating participants or third parties, so they likely don't have the licensing to make an official Disney character snack. So there are some unofficial things like drinks people have made and called different characters, but I'm trying to find something official. And I'm not really seeing any snacks in Mexico, so we may have to move on to Germany and maybe there's something in the caramel shop? They have a ton of really cute cocoa merchandise. Like, how cute is this little sweatshirt? $54.95 little crop sweatshirt. It says, remember me. They have a ton of cocoa stuff, but I'm not seeing any kind of, like, snack. I was hoping for maybe a bottled beverage or a candy bar or something, but not seeing anything yet. But I'm going to go ahead and jump in line for the Grand Fiesta Tour. This is a family-friendly boat ride through Mexico with three caballeros, Jose, Panchito, and Donald Duck. This is an opening day attraction, although when it opened, it was called El Rio del Tempo, and it did not have the characters in it. Alan and I actually recently, for Epcot's 40th anniversary, came and did every opening day attraction, ate in every opening day pavilion, checked out the 40th anniversary stuff. Lots of fun Epcot details and history. If you're into that, you can check that video out too. Grand Fiesta Tour is a very cute attraction. I love a classic boat ride, and I like the Three Caballeros, but it's not one I would wait too long for. However, it's usually a good filler ride in between some eating and drinking, maybe after a margarita. It does not have Lightning Lane, but the line usually isn't too long. Grand Fiesta Tour check, and I'm walking out through the other side of the pyramid, which has a botanical gardens, like a rainforest with lilies and orchids, and it's beautiful. Maybe not lilies, I don't really know anything about plants, but they do have orchids here during the Flower and Garden Festival, I know that much. And a lot of people don't know you can come back here, it's very pretty. Anyway, I did not find a snack, so I'm going to scoot to Germany and see if they have something there. Another one of my tasks is to do the Macarena in three countries, and that's embarrassing so I'm thinking of countries that have somewhere quiet where one I'm away from these crowds two I can show you good places to get away from the crowds three I can prop my phone up and do the Macarena with two hands because if you've ever done the Macarena you know it is a two-handed activity it just doesn't work with one hand and four most importantly I don't embarrass myself in front of thousands of people. Actually five might be the most important and that's so that I don't distract or to take away from anyone else's day because that's one of our main objectives here is while we come and film in the parks we don't ever want to ruin someone else's day and get in their way and be annoying and it'd be annoying if I just did the Macarena in the middle of this crowd. I've made it to Germany as you can see it's busy 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 Snow White's over there I wonder if she has any snacks for me. Ooh, look at the line for the caramel shop. I'm gonna go in to the other shops and see what the packaged treats look like. Because again, I don't think I'm gonna find anything at a restaurant or at a beer cart, because you actually can't put Disney characters uh, on alcohol, so you can never have a drink that's like Buzz Lightyear's Boozy Blast. 
because they can't associate Disney characters with alcohol. So let's look in the wine cellar. Let's look in the shops. Thinking that something like this, like in a box, will have a character on it. That's an advent calendar. I don't know that that counts, though, because it's not like... I mean, Santa's kind of a character, maybe? Doesn't have to be a Disney character, I guess, but I think there's something better. If you're wondering about my personal visit to Germany, which, again, is why I can look in Germany for a snack, Again, it has to be a country that I visited in the real world. I went to Germany when I was in college with my mom and my grandparents. We just went to the northern tip of Germany to visit a small town called Holstein. We looked at some other things there, but it was on kind of a fun heritage tour where we also went to Sweden and Denmark, and we actually met some of our relatives overseas. But some of my family is from Holstein, which is why we went there. All right, here are the packaged snacks. And I don't know that these count... Like, I know the Haribo bear is on them, but he's not the shape of the snack, maybe? I don't know that he counts. I don't know that he's a character. I feel like I'm going to try harder and try and find a more recognizable, like, actual character. Something Disney, hopefully, or at least something more than just a brand mascot. I was supposed to go back to Germany in 2020 with a bunch of my friends and Alan to go to Oktoberfest. We we're also going to go like Disneyland Paris and do some other things, but obviously that trip got canceled. Still on the bucket list though to go to Oktoberfest and of course Disneyland Paris and make some man fam content. That'd be fun. One day, one day. And here's what's annoying is remember, I'm not allowed to go through American Adventure, but the next country I've been to is France, which is over there. And I've also been to the UK, which is over there. And I'm not allowed to just walk the like three countries it would take for me to get there. And I also can't go look at America where I'm almost guaranteed to find some kind of character based snack. I gotta go all the way back around. So well played stream, well played. You know what, considering I have to backtrack anyway, I bet I can find somewhere quiet in the China Pavilion. There's not a ton to do here. There's some shopping, some dining, there is a movie. Um, but considering Mulan's not out right now, I think I can go back on this little trail and not embarrass myself doing the Macarena. I do think China is one of the more beautiful pavilions. I just think all of the artwork and the decor is so ornate and lovely. And while I don't love the year round food, their festival food usually is pretty good. So I wish they would update the quick service restaurant. It's kind of just any old Americanized Chinese spot, but I'm very looking forward to their uh, festival booth for the festival of the holidays. Cause in previous years they had these like spicy fries that were amazing. <music> I have an idea for which countries I want to do more Macarenas in, especially considering I have to walk around the other side of the countries at this point. But China's a good one to find some nooks and crannies that aren't super busy. it to Canada A where I've never been but I would be pleased to RSVP as pending. I will become a disgruntled pelican if I'm not able to find a character snack. Can't look here though. Never been to Canada. So you may be wondering why I've asked you to join me in the place I currently am. If I can't look for a snack here well it's because Canada has one of the most beautiful luxuriating stunning mosaics of nature. Okay, I'm done with Bad Boy Rose impression, but I hope you enjoyed it. What I was trying to say is the Canada Pavilion is beautiful and often very uncrowded because there's unfortunately not a ton going on here. You have the movie, which right now is actually a food and wine booth. You have some shops and you have La Cellier, but it's really pretty. So I'm going to do the Macarena here and this is a great place to come, grab a beer and come kind of get away from the crowds. <music> Made it to the United Kingdom. This is another country I've actually visited, which means I can pop into the shops. I'm so sorry for the accent and see if I can find a good snack. I feel good about the UK having a good snack. We're gonna start in the sportsman shop and see if they have any kind of treats. Now I'm thinking they might have something in the UK because there's a ton of characters from the UK. Mary Poppins, Alice in Wonderland, Winnie the Pooh, Peter Pan. It's one of the most beloved stories are British. So I'm wondering if maybe they'll have like something with one of those characters as the mascot. Jemmy Dodgers. 
Those look lovely, but I can't eat them for this. Here's a wall of sweets. Let's see. Milky bar. Is that like a chocolate bar? Terry's orange in a bar form? Oh, I've had that like orange that you smack on the thing. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Mars bar. Oh, arrow. When I went to the UK when I was much younger, I was like eight. Those were my favorite, the mint ones. But no mascots yet. Hmm. Here's some more treats. Again, Mars bar, lion, Henry Goods, black licorice. None of these have a character as the mascot. Maybe I'll have some more luck in the Toy Soldier, which was always one of my favorite stores, and it didn't reopen until recently, but also, did anyone else have these books? Because I absolutely had those exact books for, like, all the Disney movies. Anyone else? Anyway, let's see if they have something. All right. I see Peter Pan. I see Winnie the Pooh. I see Mary Poppins. Look at this cute Mary Poppins glassware. $14.99 for that little glass. But look at this cute little shirt. Oh my gosh. I love Mary Poppins. I'm glad to see her get some love with merchandise and such. But I wish... She would have a snack for me. Not seeing any snacks in the Winnie the Pooh section, but am I seeing a new mug I need to buy? Look at that. Oh gosh, this is dangerous to send me in to the merch shops. This Winnie the Pooh mug is so cute, but I bet it is so hard to drink out of. That is gonna spill on your face. Oh my gosh, there's a 101 Dalmatian section. Another amazing movie that takes place in the UK and so underrated. I love this. I also am remembering that one of the things on my list is to buy something for my dogs. It's so cute. It says positively adorable. And then it's got Thunderbolt on it, the TV that they watch. Remember when all the dogs like sit on top of each other to watch it? $20 dog toy. Hmm. Okay, I've decided I'm not going to get this even though it's very cute because one, this. I don't want to hear that all the time. Dog owners, you probably know what I'm talking about. And two, I kind of want to get something for both of them, not something they have to try and share. But we have one more shop we can try in the United Kingdom to try and find a treat. This shop is connected to the tea shop, so edible things are incoming. Are these edible? That is soap. Look at this cute Alice in Wonderland collection as well. Late for everything. I need that. Did you know that optimists are often late compared to pessimists because optimists believe they have enough time to get there and then they usually don't? That's what I tell myself why I'm late all the time. I read it one I read that one, so I'm I'm keeping it. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I'm so excited because I think we just found the answer. Look at these shortbread rounds. And they have Mickey on them. You cannot deny that Mickey is a character. We are in the United Kingdom, a country I have been. I've been to London. Would love to go back on my list. Ooh, okay, but I don't know which one to get, so I'm going to ask a cast member. Spoke with a lovely cast member from the UK, and he said that the main differences are these are actually Mickey-shaped. These are round with little Mickeys imprinted on them. Um, and then there are also some that are chocolate dip, chocolate chip, and then there are some that are chocolate dipped. But he said that the traditional, like, classic one that you'd find most likely in the UK are just the classic round shortbread. So we're going to get these cute cookies. Okay, I found a nice bright spot in the tea garden to open up my cookies. Look how stinking cute these are. So I got four cookies. They are Walker's Famous Scottish Shortbread. It's been an unchanged recipe for over a hundred years. And it says, Mickey shaped cookies with pu made from pure butter. Oh yes. Mm. Mm. Come on, Bob. Come on. I need a minute. Yeah, that tastes like pure butter. It tastes like butter, salt, and sugar. There's probably flour. That is delicious. If you're from the UK, have you had these? Does everyone have these? Are these like the Oreo of the UK where it's like just everywhere? Cause I gotta say, Scotland, you guys knocked it out of the park with this one. Yo. I saw a lot of people buying these as well. And with my annual pass discount, the box was around $4, which that's a lot for four cookies compared to a grocery store, but it's not a lot for a really cute take home. It'd be a really cute thank you for someone that like watched your dog, provided your plants or like kids teacher or something. These are delicious. 
Mm -hmm. Also, how beautiful is it back here in the tea garden? You've got all these lovely flowers. There's pretty much no one else back here right now, which means I'm going to go ahead and do my third Macarena because now that they've moved Mary Poppins back into the other courtyard, Alice is around the front of the tea garden. The characters aren't back here anymore. Another great space to come and quiet, enjoy yourself. Maybe get a drink from the pub and come leisurely stroll through here. Long story short, I highly recommend exploring the pavilions and finding quiet nooks and crannies to enjoy your festival food or your drinks or just some quiet time. I don't, however, recommend doing the Macarena in public without any music where people can see you. Macarena in three countries checks off the first M of ma'am. Avoiding American Adventure checks off the A. Headed back to not Future World now for the other M as well as another task. Gonna keep looking for something for my dogs. Another task on my list is to take a picture with a Disney duck, a selfie with a Disney duck. Now, Donald Duck wasn't out in Mexico when I was there earlier and I just checked. He's not coming back out for about an hour. Daisy Duck meets at International Gateway in between France and the United Kingdom. She's also not coming out for some time. So I'm actually looking for a literal duck to try and take a selfie with, because I love Disney ducks. Target's acquired. You can usually spot some, oh no, he doesn't want a selfie. You can usually find birds right here in Canada because they want people to feed them and there's a lot of tables right here for food and wine. So I'm mostly not going to touch the ducks. I'm not going to lure them to me with food because that's not good for them, but I'm hoping one gets closer and I can take a picture with them. Not you though. I don't like you. Those birds stress me out with their pointy beaks. Hello. Hello. Look, more are coming. Do you think more want selfies? Hi. Hello. I think you're so cute. You're just waking up from your nap, but we're gonna, can, can we take a selfie real quick? Hold on. Selfie with the Disney duck, check. I didn't look ridiculous at all. Just crouching down, talking to the ducks and taking pictures with them. I'm so glad I made sure to do the Macarena from other people. Phew, <laughs> would not want to look silly, no way. I'm headed into Creation Shop to find something for my dogs, and then it's time for the thing I've been putting off this entire video. I am looking for something for my dogs, Kronk and Ella. They are both rescues. They're both adorable. Ella is very skittish. So I gotta make sure whatever I get her, she is gonna enjoy. Kronk, on the other hand, will pretty much do anything and everything I ask of him and wag his tail while doing it. So I can be a little bit more silly with Kronk. But let's see what we can find in the way of dog gifts. I'm in the toy section, but it's definitely more like human toys than it is dog toys. Now that said, I'm pausing everything because do I need this Lotso Hug and Bear sweatshirt? That is a cool sweatshirt. No, stay focused. I love this collection they just did where it's all like old school drawings of Mickey and Minnie on a bunch of things. If I lived somewhere colder, I would get this like cropped quarter zip. It's so cute. I also love this like black and white stripe with old school Mickey on it. Very cute. But I don't think Kronk can fit. Ooh, finally found a little pet section. Spirit jersey. Ella would never, but Kronk would. But for $40, I don't know. Uh, let's see, a collapsible pet bowl. That's cute, like for walks. A toy mailbox, so that's fun. There's like letters, $24.99, like you pull letters out of it and they try and get it out. That's fun. Ooh, do I need this for my Kronkles? It says chill out and it's got a bandana. I think Kronk needs this. Okay, the question is, do I think Ella will wear one too? Probably not willingly. One thing Ella loves are pillows. She likes to kind of like arrange herself in a pillow pile on the couch. And she'll like push them off and she'll snuggle herself right in just how she wants to go. So I'm kind of looking for a pillow to see if I can add it to the pillow pile for her. Imagine I just bought this $60 dog bed that has Baby Yoda in it. Now I will admit it's very cool and if I had seen The Mandalorian, I fell asleep after like a couple episodes. I tried multiple times and I just thought it was boring. You can yell at me in the comments if you want. Anyway, um, if I was like a Mandalorian fan, it's very cute. 
but it seems intense to do that without being one. I've been around this store like three times and I can't find a pillow anywhere, so I think the next best thing for Miss Ellabella is a stuffed animal. Something she can snuggle with in her pillow pile, or maybe eat. Depends on how she's feeling that day, which I understand. <gasps> Does Ella need a Mickey? Uh, he's got little beans in his tush, and I'm afraid if she eats him, that will be bad. I bet I can find another little smaller stuffed animal that would be good. All right, here we go. Disney's latest and greatest collection, Munchlings. They are little plushes, and you don't know which one you're going to get, kind of like Wishables, but they're all themed to different Disney snacks. So this will be fun, because I've never gotten one. And we can open it together, and I'll let Ella cuddle with it. And by that, I mean she will probably destroy it. But that's fine. That's fine. So let's see what collections we have here. We have an ice cream collection where we could get Maleficent, Pain and Panic, Lotso, Ka, Hades, or Oogie Boogie. That's cute. We also have a little baked goods box where I could get a mini cupcake, a Mickey cinnamon roll, a Stitch pineapple upside down cake, a Baymax s'more, an Eeyore muffin, a Winnie the Pooh cake, or a mystery character. Ooh. And then last but not least, we have this box which has a different mini, a different Mickey, Chip, Dale, Goofy, Pluto, and these are like candy ones. I like these ones the least, so I'm gonna put that back. And now do I like the ice cream villains or this one? You know what, Ella's named after a villain. Her name's actually Corella DeVille. Kronk's named after a villain. There's a mystery character in this one too. I like the ice cream. This is for Ella. This is perfect too, because it says age zero and up, so. All right, and now I'm going to use the mobile order or the mobile checkout on the app so I don't have to wait in the long line. So mobile checkout's really easy. You hit the little plus down at the bottom, and then you do shop in store, and then it lets you pick stores. I'm picking Creation Shop. Step one, step two, step three, start shopping. So then it, you scan an item. Scanned with my phone. It adds your merchandise discount on there for you already if your tickets are linked up. So like my annual pass discount goes on there already. Scan another item. Add it to bag. It's got both of them on there. And then you check out. It'll, you do your face ID to make sure it's you. Or if you're already logged in, I don't know that it will. And then it'll make sure you want to do the card. The right card. My right card is selected. Purchase. Super easy. And now you get a barcode or a QR code and you take that to one of the exits because there's cast members that are there with bags and they'll check to make sure you're not stealing anything and they'll give you a bag and you're good to go. Easy peasy. I love mobile checkout. Especially, remember when it used to be like 15 minutes to check out at the end of the night? It's much easier. I have one task left. Gotta get over to World Nature to go visit a friend of mine. But it's not just gonna be any visit. It's gonna be an embarrassing visit this time. More embarrassing than talking to an eel somehow. In definitely not an attempt to avoid what I have to do and push it back even further, I'm going to open Ella's Munchling so we can see what she got. I understand why kids would like these because it's the thrill of not knowing that's gonna gonna sell these things. Parents, this is why you're gonna buy a bunch of them because your kids are gonna want a certain one and you're not gonna know which one it is. This is like the wishables of today. All right, let's see. Oh, it's so cute. Lots of hugging bear. Okay, this one's adorable. I kind of wanted this one or Painter Panic. It smells like strawberries. It's gonna be hard for me to give that to Ella, but I will, because she's cute. Final task on my list that I need to check off is go visit my dear friend, Mr. Eel. He lives in the seas and he's an eel, as you may have guessed. He's a real eel in an aquarium that for some reason I gave a voice to in a video and it's become a thing ever since. Mr. Eel is often the voice of things like safety announcements, especially when the parks reopened and masks were required. Mr. Eel would remind you of, of the safety rules because it's frankly funnier for an eel to do it than for me to do it. 
he also might say to subscribe or like and just anything I think's funnier coming from an eel than a person that's what Mr. Eel likes to talk about but today we're gonna do more than just talk to Mr. Eel welcome to the sea base this is at the exit of the seas with Nemo and friends which is a slow moving dark ride through the finding Nemo story you can ride that attraction. I think it's very cute. It's one of my favorite filler rides and family rides in the park. It usually doesn't have a long wait. Uh, or you can just come in the sea base, which is a great place to get out of the heat, enjoy some air conditioning. There's tons of exhibits here with all kinds of marine life, dolphins, manatees, sharks, rays, turtles, and of course, your friend of mine, Mr. Eel. Hey, Mr. Eel, how are you, buddy? Hey Molly, hey everybody, hey man, fam. It's me, Mr. Eel. Now, Mr. Eel, I'm doing a video today where I let the, our followers decide what I did all day and they wanted me to come see you. Well, that's mighty nice of y'all. I love having visitors. Love when y'all come say hi. But that's not all, Mr. Eel. Um, they want us to have a rap battle. A rap battle? Well, I'll give it a go. This is going to be the most embarrassing thing I've ever done with Nemo. I don't believe in judging a book by its cover, but if you were to look at me and be like, I bet she's not good at rapping, you'd be right. I'm going to wear these inside. It'll block my shade and give me a cool look. Mr. Eel, drop me a beat. My name's Molly, co-founder of the Famous Club. We're just three best friends doing what we love. We film theme parks, travel content number two. We love the man that hey, that's you. Mr. Eel's a buddy who I came to see, but sorry, Mr. You can't talk me. Yo, 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 my name's Mr. Eel. I live here in the sea. Do you feel? I want my people to wash their hands. I don't have any, but that's my demand. I'm so glad you're watching Man Club. Compared to other channels, they're a cook. But in a rap battle, I came to throw down. Because only a talking Eel deserves to wear the crown. Mr. Eel, that was pretty impressive. Um, I'm gonna get out of here so I can forget that I just rapped in the seas. I'm sorry to the, the good name of rap music, um, but drop in the comments who you think won that rap battle. Checked off everything on the list you gave me on our stream. I hope you had fun following along. If you want to check out the stream and you missed it, we actually have it coming very soon in the form of a YouTube video on our sister channel, Mammoth Club Streams. Make sure you subscribe over there as well. We don't upload content there quite as frequently or quite as regularly, but we do turn some of our really fun streams, such as planning my day videos, ask me anything, Oreo cookie challenges into videos, so you can go check those out as well. In the meantime, friends, make sure to rate, review, subscribe, follow us on social media. It's been a great day. Until next time, friends, I'm Molly, and it's been magical. Now go watch the Animal Kingdom version of this video. Bye! Coco, look at this. Do you want to wear this? Are you excited? You like it? Yeah, let's put it on. Oh my gosh, he's so handsome. Look how handsome he is. Yeah! Ella, look, I got you this. Ella, look. What do you think? You want to see what's inside? Ella, you're in your pillow pile, and I'll give you your new toy. There you go.